The cause of Matthew Perry's death at his home is going to require more investigative steps by the LA County Medical Examiner's Office before they can conclude on the cause of his death. This is according to records from the agency. A bystander had brought his head above the water and gotten him to the edge. Then firefighters removed him from the water upon their arrival and a rapid medical assessment revealed he was deceased prior to first responder arrival. So the medical examiner currently has his cause of death listed as deferred, meaning in cases where the cause of death cannot be determined at the time of autopsy, a deferred certificate is issued until further studies are done. So yes, an autopsy has been done, but examiners are awaiting for the toxicology results, which can take weeks to, and actually sometimes months to complete. What we do know is that Perry was found unresponsive in his hot tub and no foul play was suspected. Now, the L.A. Fire Department spokesman, Brian Humphrey, said that a 911 call came in Saturday at 4.07 p.m. for a water rescue emergency. The LAPD responded at 4.10 p.m. and characterized the call as a death investigation shortly thereafter. Matthew Perry wrote a memoir in November of 2022, and he acknowledged that he was battling addiction at the height of his career when he was on the show Friends. This included addiction with alcohol, cocaine, and opiates. I'm sure there's all sorts of speculation on his cause of death, but no one knows for sure until the complete autopsy and toxicology report is finished. And even then, there's no guarantees of a definitive answer. But people dying in hot tubs, that's a real thing. According to the Consumer Product Safety Commissions, or the CPSC, there's an average of 20 deaths per year related to hot tubs in the United States with the majority of these deaths resulting from drowning. It's important to note that this figure does not include other causes of death related to hot tub use, such as infections, overheating or hyperthermia, as well as electrocution. Now, the actual number of deaths is likely higher than the data suggests, as many incidents may go unreported or undocumented. The real number might be closer to 300. Children under the age of five years account for nearly one-fifth of all drownings in hot tubs. The most common way someone dies in a hot tub is when they slip and fall and hit their head, which may or may not be related to alcohol or other drugs. Another potential way someone can die in a hot tub is by what's called entrapment, meaning suction injuries inside the hot tub that lead to drowning. So if something is blocking the drain that leads to pipes that suck water into the filter to clean the water, there could be increased suction as the pump works to clear that obstruction. When this happens, uh, people, and especially children, can get their hair or their limbs trapped by the increased suction. For example, with this 37-year-old woman, she drowned in a jacuzzi because when she bent down to pick up her hairpin for the bottom of the jacuzzi, her right arm got stuck in that drainage pipe and she was sucked in. And unfortunately, she was not able to be resuscitated after being pulled out of the jacuzzi. Then we have hot tub deaths that are heat-related injuries. The temperature in a hot tub should never exceed 104 degrees Fahrenheit. If the water in the hot tub is too hot, it can raise a person's body temperature to the point where they can get heat stroke because the body can no longer regulate its internal temperature, especially if someone is in the water for too long. Also, when the water is too hot, people can become sleepy, increasing the risk of drowning. And the risk is even higher if that person is drinking alcohol, especially because alcohol not only makes you sleepy, but it dehydrates you, making you more prone to having a heat stroke. Such was the case with this 23-year-old woman. Her autopsy results showed that she died as a result of hyperthermia after having spent almost five hours in a 105 degree hot tub and she was found to have alcohol in her system. Now, when exposed to high temperatures for prolonged periods of time, the brain, it eventually starts to malfunction and this causes people to lose consciousness. And this process is accelerated when combined with alcohol. Let's look at a country who has an unusually high amount of sudden deaths in hot tubs or hot bathtubs, Japan particularly among elderly people. This retrospective study looked at the circumstances and the physical findings of these deaths at autopsy. In this study, there were 268 people who were found unconscious or dead during hot tub bathing in Japan. The manner of death was judged as being a natural cause of death in 71% of cases. For example, having a heart attack. Now, in 24% of the cases, the manner of death was determined to be accidental drowning. The average age of the deceased was 72 years, 
with no significant difference between males and females. A seasonal difference was evident in winter having displayed the highest frequency of deaths. Now, looking at alcohol levels in all of these cases, there was a higher association with alcohol use in the drowning deaths compared to those who died of the natural causes. Of course, other drugs could come into play that can have a similar effect as alcohol, especially benzodiazepines like Xanax or Clonopin and opiates like Vicodin or Percocet. And that's why it's important to do a post-mortem toxicology report and the time that it takes for that to come back, it can vary widely depending on several factors, including the specific tests that are being conducted, the workload of the laboratory, and the location of the laboratory. Generally though, they can take anywhere from a few days to several months. 